We have, in the past, in I don't want to say we've enforced 70E because that would be that would be inaccurate. We can't we can't cite an employer for not following 70E, right. but we we can cite an employer f for two things. Uh, the one thing is we can cite them for violating our existing requirements. We have uh, our general PPE requirement in 1910-132 requires basically the employer to provide uh, personal protective equipment where it's um, necessary for protecting employees. Um, and and the second area is uh, in 1910-335, we have a general requirement for the employer to provide protection from electric um, arc and, and shock hazards. And those are um, very general requirements. So in order to enforce those requirements, generally we have to show that it's industry practice to provide certain types of protection or the extent to which protection should be provided. Um, in that case, we can look to 70E. We've done that in the past. I, I believe it was uh, Ford Motor Company uh, was cited and we had a self signed a settlement agreement with them and they've agreed to follow 70E. And, and adopting and addressing some of these issues that really aren't um, spelled out in black and white in the, in the OSHA standard. I mean, that it certainly seems to me that if, if I'm an employer and I want to comply with a general requirement for protecting my employees from electric shock and, a, and a, um, electric arc, that the first place I'm going to look is 70E and that workplace.